grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His today you would hearken to his voice. Please join me in reading a portion of Psalm 89, beginning on page 713 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will read verse 89, 1 through 4, and 15 through 8 in unison. Your love, O Lord, forever will I see, from age to age. My mouth will proclaim your faithfulness, for I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. Have I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are your people. Who have know the festival, festival shout. They will walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your presence. presence. They will rejoice, rejoice daily in your name. name. They, they are jubilant in your, your righteousness. righteousness. For you, For you are, are the glory of their strength, and, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the, the Lord is our, our ruler. The Holy One of Israel, Israel is our King. Glory, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. 
The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart, to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's rewards, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I love these words we've just heard from Matthew's Gospel. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones will not lose their reward. Jesus has empowered his disciples to carry his message of get good news into the world. Yet he warns that this path is difficult, really difficult. For ironically, devoting your life to welcoming, to hospitality, and to building connections can actually cause some relationships to fracture. Jesus' words about welcome are about more than a warm greeting, but rather challenge us to think about deep hospitality. Hospitality is a form of service and compassionate caring that results from seeing God's own image in each and every person we encounter. And I do believe that if we actually did see Jesus' own face when we see another, especially someone in need, I believe we'd all act very differently. That we'd feel compelled to do something, to open ourselves to new possibilities and take action without any thought of personal gain or accolades or rewards simply because it's Jesus who is asking. Whether he's asking for that glass of water or shelter or to do our part to address injustice. Deep hospitality is part of real relationships and Jesus keeps pointing us towards the wonder of relationships. For God is relationship. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Blessed Trinity, all these images of God lead us towards the truth of holy intimacy and loving action. We, who are made in God's own image, we're made for relationship. Relationship with God and relationship with one another. There's a book written a few years back called The Divine Dance. It's written by Richard Rohr, a Franciscan priest. And I find a portion of this book particularly relevant for us today. Rora talks about the complexity of our lives, about the evils that do surround us. Political corruption, ecological devastation, warring against one another, hating each other based on race, gender, religion, or sexual orientation. And he goes on to describe that the greatest disease, and he spells this dis-ease, dis-ease, Facing humanity right now is our profound and painful sense of disconnection. Disconnection from God, but also from ourselves, from each other, 
and from the world. Isn't that so relevant for us today? And it's a powerful reminder, humanity's greatest disease is disconnection from God, from ourselves, and from each other, and from the world. Rohrer goes on to explain that in discovering the gift of the Trinity, the gift of deep relationship within God, we can begin to reconnect with others and the world by opening ourselves to seeing God's divine light in everyone, especially in those who we see as different. To see Christ in all our neighbors. It's what we need today. Reconnection and relationship, welcoming and deep hospitality. In this time of two pandemics, pandemics both of the coronavirus and the one of our spirits, we can and should face the truth of what it means to live into deep hospitality and compassionate caring for one another. To care for another's health and wellness by wearing masks and washing our hands and maintaining social distance to prevent the spread of a disease to the most vulnerable. Even if we may personally believe that we really don't need to do those things to take care of our own self. Thinking of one another. And to care about justice and dignity for all humankind by confronting the reality of our own nation's sin of disconnection, of racism, and systemic oppression that continue to, the, to affect the lives of so many of our brothers and sisters from generation to generation. I recently attended a diocesan presentation, and it was virtual, of course, but it was presented to our youth, and it was all about allyship. It's a funny word, but one that seems to push us to think about how we can, as individuals, stand up and do love. Love as action. I was moved by one of the speakers encouraging us to simply begin. To begin by first doing the internal work of deciding who we are and whose we are. And thinking through how that does apply to our actions in our day-to-day -day lives. As Christ's own, how will we choose to act if family or friends or associates make inappropriate jokes or comments, comments that denigrate another child of God? Will we be silently complicit or take that uncomfortable step to say something to stop it? Will we choose to take the time to explore another point of view by reading a book or watching a movie or listening to a podcast that tells of another's experiences with racism or oppression? Or will we remain within our own echo chambers, unwilling to see or hear anything beyond our own known experiences? And when we learn about injustice, will we take a stand or look away? Because it's just too much trouble to deal with something that May, need, may not seem to affect us directly, or we don't want to rock the boat or stir up anything against the status quo. Jesus shows us the way of welcome and deep hospitality that purposefully strives to end that disease of disconnection by building relationships that see beyond stereotypes 
and labels. We are all welcomed by our living God into the divine dance. For we are most fully human when we create connections across those differences that can divide us. We are most fully human when we do love with radical consistency. Consistency between the Jesus we proclaim and the way we live our lives. For God is relationship and relationships do change everything. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones will not lose their reward. As Christ's disciples, we are all called to live into Christ's love, compassion, and caring, accepting that all whom God has created are God's own beloved. How will we begin today to do love? How will we carry Christ's light and love to all our neighbors. Amen. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, his, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever and ever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord. Have, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And, and we, we shall, shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
prayers of the people are form four on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O God of love, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your tender mercy that we might find our confidence in your strength and be blessed with your presence that we may be still and know that you are God. All this we ask in the name of your precious Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the words of the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May the hope of God fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and spread through you to others, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.